Do Telecom proudly presents The Entrepreneur, the TV show that will determine new pioneers with groundbreaking business ideas. The winner of the competition will be awarded 2 million dirhams, which includes 1 million dirhams investment from Do, a Telecom's bundle of business services supplied by Do, one year's free office space courtesy of Silicon Oasis founders, an advertising and PR package from the Leo Burnett Group, mentoring and networking support provided by WAMDA, 12 months of advisory and consultancy assistance from Ernst & Young, free media and editorial from CPI. Tom Urquhart and welcome again to The Entrepreneur. Now I can tell you that we are one step closer to discovering who will become The Entrepreneur. In the previous episode of the show we saw how our finalists had been selected to continue on this path of new challenges. Our panel of expert judges have selected their top three business ideas, the ones that impressed them most. Only three business ideas were up to the challenge and made it this far. Our finalists are Abdul Ghani from FlyConnect, Lulu from Nabish, and Mohammed and Faisal from Alink. Now this episode is all about grasping the financial pressures that your business faces, and our candidates are on their way to undertake those tasks now, but they still don't know what awaits them. in a car, not sure where we're going. We still don't have any clue how hard this task would be. However, hopefully we are up to the challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of relieved that you're the financial guy in our company. Oh, don't I'm put this on me, man. I'm with more. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me on the marketing side. Now, since today's tasks are all surrounding the world of finance, each of our candidates will be working with individual financial specialists. Uh, they will be finding out a little more about the importance of becoming profitable, but also clear financial planning. Hi, Lulu, it's Ross. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ross. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? My Good name afternoon. is Abdel Ghani Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. So, the challenge today is to find more about your venture, where you stand, what your status is, and what the challenges are uh, in the future. The only thing you're doing is you're breaking these two connectivities and connecting these two directly through a Wi-Fi network. Exactly. Is that, is that exactly. basically This is one of uh, the features that are available uh, for the device. Tell me more about uh, Nabesh. Sure. It's a, it's a startup uh, we launched, we went live about um, three weeks ago, and it's a skill sharing site for the MENA region. Welcome back, and as you can see, it's all fairly calm here at Entrepreneur HQ, but Anthea, what's it like with you? So Tom, our three finalists are in with the experts. They're going to be facing some tough questions about the finances of their businesses. Things seem pretty calm for now, but that could all change depending on how tough the questions actually get. We're just going to have to wait and see. Tough indeed. 
All the experts got straight down to business with the candidates. Today we're going to discuss the bro you know broad business plan a little exactly. bit. A USB flash device, it's a necessity for every one of us mm -hmm. because it's so, so small, it's so efficient, and everyone carries one. Companies are not built for today. Companies are built for uh, a lifetime, right? Sure. And, and technology obviously disrupts and changes very rapidly. If you're looking five to seven years ahead, do you still think something like this will be needed? That was a firm comment from Feroz. Will Lulu face the same with Ross? So excuse me, uh, going straight straight in, but how is this intended to make some money? It has uh, three ways to generate money, at least uh, at least for now. Uh, starting with uh, advertising revenue, moving into online payments, peer-to-peer -peer online payments, and then uh, a third option would be uh, subscriptions. So following a freemium uh, freemium model. If you were to win this money, how how exactly would you be using that money to? Uh, to drive investment. First, it will be uh, to build a team, and uh, the second part would be uh, marketing. Obviously, we need to get the word out. How much money is this generating at the moment? It's not generating any money, but uh, in the near future, we're going to start basically uh, taking on advertising. Effectively, trying to build a new social network. In a way. <laughs> around this, is there? Have you thought about? trying to tap into any existing social networks definitely. rather than trying to build this, this population yourself? But we're definitely tapping into uh, social networks a lot at this moment. We didn't want to be completely tied to Facebook. As for Mohammed and Faisal, they want to prove that there's a need in the market for a link. Our business idea is uh, offering personal assistance in the form of packages. I use my driver for that, basically. Yes, correct. So the, the kind of people that you hire to do this work uh, on that level? It's not just the driver himself. Everything else can be done from the office in terms of researching for quotations for you. I'm still uh, a bit a bit confused uh, about this model. Um, perhaps you could just b very briefly say who is doing what in your company because I'm... We have full-time jobs. So we have a management team that's actually running the show for us. Okay. So uh, we have, um, you know, we have a general manager uh, we have an operations manager, and uh, we have a supervisor for the assistants. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, they have um, you know uh, multiple roles at this stage because we're still a small team. Obviously, if we get the prize of the show, then we can mm -hmm. we can probably dedicate ourselves to this. Okay, so maybe you could just take me through a, a little bit more in detail your your exact business model. The operating costs is just our PAs and uh, whatever we pay for running an office. In a five-year model, our goal was by year four to have 12 assistants. Okay. Uh, and those 12 assistants will continue into year five as well. So we, that mm -hmm. would be our steady state, to have 12 okay. assistants. My concern, and, I, and, and I'm trying to debate this with you, is when was the last time I used my DVD player? I will give you an answer, never, right? I don't use it anymore. When was the last time I'll use a USB device? And I can tell you, in the next six months to a year, I'll say never. With, within the UAE, people, they have to be registered to work, right? You have to. There's a big drive to make sure that um, any freelance activity is, is undertaken, is done, being done within a regulated environment. How would you make sure that Mabesh is being compliant with that? It shouldn't be a problem. This is, uh, this is from, as per the lawyer that I've checked with. Uh, a lot of people are on their father's visa or on their husband's visa. And there doesn't seem to be a problem for them uh, doing uh, working. So basically, FlyConnect will not have only one single product. It will have different products. I'm a little lost. Okay. Are you a reference design maker or are you a technology owner? Be careful in prescribing things to people when you yourself don't really understand what the prescription is going to look like and what consumers are going to actually want. Uh, I have a master's degree in computer engineering and uh, I know everything related to screens, mm. different products for different customers. You're telling me that one million dirhams is going to get you there, where you will be able to devise, develop different devices and different products, etc., to be able to take to market? Is that what you're telling me? First, be creating the first product with this, with the sum of money that we'll be getting, and basically from the feedback that we'll be getting from the customers, we'll be, let's say, having a more uh, advanced features and more advanced product for our customers. So I give you a million dirhams, and all you're gonna do is put out one product in a market that obsoletes every 18 months to test the consumer reaction 
What if consumers don't want this device and nobody cares about this? What are you going to do? Whenever you are giving a product into the market, the, without the customer feedback, you cannot improve, your company will fail from the first year. Okay, so I, I, I accept that argument. You're talking about a market which has a five to seven year growth. I bet you if I was sitting with the guys who made DVD players, they would be telling me exactly what you're telling me. Oh, it's a five to you know, seven percent growth market, right? And then comes in Netflix and Blockbuster is a dead company. So what I'm trying to tell you is that no amount of money can make things happen for you. It's about business strategy. And my biggest concern about your business strategy is that you're hooking on to a dying business. I don't have the luxury for you to go and experiment. It seems that Abdel Ghani is short-tempered. He stormed out of the room because he was not able to put up with Thoreau's criticism. So, what's happened? Uh, well, I don't think uh, he's a coach. I don't know what kind of person. He's a technology expert and venture capitalist. What's uh, what's he said that's potentially upset you? I mean, you've stormed out, which is a, which is a big deal. Well, so. uh, no, the thing is that uh, he was uh, at a point a bit nervous. So you're sorry. Hang on. You're saying Feroz was was nervous. Well, if you take back, uh, if you rewind the tape, you're going to see whenever he took his mobile or his camera and uh, with the USB thing, if you can see just how he put them, it will show you that he was nervous. So from here, you're saying that unless we find you another expert, you're you're not going to continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a very straightforward person and I shared with him the pitfalls of the business. I, and if that feels insulting, then perhaps you know he needs to develop another business plan and go to other people who will tell him what he wants to hear, but ultimately likely not succeed. So perhaps the best way to deal with it would be to have a new shake hands and we start again, but we start again with building a business. So let's go and and, and see if we can meet up with him and, and, right. and start the process all over again. Let's go and find and, him. And, and say sorry to him. How about that? Thank you. That would be a good way to that start. That would be great. Yeah. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm so sorry about your feelings, right? I, I just want to help you build a business. And, and I think we should start from fresh. Excuse me, yeah. excuse me. Please, I don't yeah. need such remarks from an expert. Okay. Please bring well, another coach yeah, yeah, another but, but, but business. Look, uh, look, look, Abdul Ghani, come with me, right? Come, come to the room, right? Let's sit down for a few minutes. I, w I like your passion. It's a great thing to have. Come with me. Let's build a business together, right? Let's sit and listen to each other and figure out what is the best way to take this forward, right? I don't have a problem. So let's go. I don't have a problem. So let's but go. Again, let's please, come, uh, come. Let's go. Let's, let's, that's let's not insult again. That's okay, it. let's not do that. Come on. Let's, let's go and build something together, right? That's the most important thing. I think if you were to go away and think about three areas in particular, the first would be around the business plan and firming up your numbers. The second would be around your costs and understanding how much this will cost to go into multilingual platforms. And the third is around the legal aspects and visas. The one area where I think you have something really good going is that you have a technolo technology framework. When we look at finances, think big, right? Sure. Think much bigger. First thing you do is you go talk to one of the OEMs, sit down with them and share with them that you have a patent and you would, would like to license the technology in a minimum set of devices. You know, start with a reasonable number, 100, 200,000 devices that go out, right? Charge them whatever, 50 cents or whatever for that. Very, very incrementally small amount of money, which roughly gives you the same profit, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe a little bit higher. Okay. But now you have a wide market. I think it was very interesting to hear that you have already had your financials audited. That uh, does presuppose a certain order. One of the major challenges is the capacity and the pricing issue. So uh, that's quite a lot. Just the fact that you're here today gives me hope that you are wanting to do something. Thank you very much again and I'm sorry for the misunderstanding that happened. No worries. Thank you. So, second time round, how was that? Uh, much better. I think we diffused the emotions. Um, I think the biggest issue is that I pushed him really hard. And I think after I put my hands on his shoulders and I brought him in, he completely changed as a person. 
And he then started opening up and listening a little bit more and seeing that, yes, indeed, he had holes in his business plan that he needed to fix. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry about the drama. No, it's a, that, that's What's a, a day of, without drama? Part of life, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the advice has been given. How do you think it went? Did she take on board all the advice that you had to uh, suggest? I think she's, uh, she's very responsive. Um, she really wants to make sure that she's thought about everything. I think if she puts in that hard work, she does have something that could be different and better in the marketplace. So how did Mohammed and Faisal respond to your advice? Uh, as a matter of fact, I think they responded uh, extremely well. I think I, I hit bullseye, basically, and we did go through all major points. So the point that uh, I'll be taking with me whenever I leave is that whenever, uh, let's say, we have experts in uh, some fields, uh, it's better to approach them than to really uh, reinvent the wheel. The stuff he gave us as advice, we, um, we thought were all valid points, uh, but they're not points that we haven't looked at in the past. I don't think he asked me to change anything as such. He, uh, he just made some very valid comments about the feasibility of, uh, of certain things. We have to be able to manage how many clients we have, at the same time manage how many uh, people on the ground we have in terms of staff. So that, that's a, a thing we, should, we need to work out in a more structured manner. After a day spent with the experts scrutinizing their business plans, the candidates are heading back to the studio where they will face more questions. Now, here in studio, the panel of judges have joined us. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. And we're going to take an opportunity during the break to have a look through a quick summary of what the finalists have been up to throughout the day. So while we have a look at that, uh, then of course after our contestants will be back out in front of our panel of judges where they'll be getting some advice and a few honest truths. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Entrepreneur, and it gives me a great privilege and pleasure to welcome into the studio for the first time our panel of judges. Welcome, judges. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are you ready as we continue on our journey of discovery? We're ready. Good Absolutely. stuff. Well, let's get started because, as we mentioned, our three finalists have been taking advice from financial experts. What have they learned? Let's find out if there's any plus or minus points to discuss as we bring out the first of our three finalists, and it is Abdul Rani. We were watching the meeting that you had with the financial consultant. Yeah. Trying to get my head around what happened in there. Uh, I'd like to know what you would have done differently to manage the meeting in your favor. Well, basically, uh, manners and respect are the most important thing. And he didn't show respect at the first stage. And that's why he came back to me and apologized. So there's no self-reflection on your side? Well, from my side, uh, I was defending my idea. Uh, I gave an example for, let's say, one of the features of my device. And his answer was, uh, it wasn't professional at all. So we're not going to dwell on this further. Question about the technology aspect okay. of the business. I'd like to know after the meeting and over this period of time since we last talked, what have you thought about as far as how you're going to subcontract or sub-license the development? Uh, the technical expert really gave a great feedback to me to change uh, the business plan. Now, uh, the idea is that uh, we're not going to subcontract manufacturing for one company and then try to sell other companies for distribution. No, we are going to license the intellectual property for a company. If she is willing to give us a good price for the exclusive rights, we're going to give it, for example, for one year, exclusive rights. And then for each unit, we're going to have only 50 cent for each uh, device being sold. Else, we're going to have uh, the, uh, multiple companies having the license sold for them. Okay. Your session with the consultant seemed quite constructive. My question to you uh, in terms of Nebbish is how many uh, members do you believe you need in order to break even? Okay, I actually made the calculation. 
based on the based on the session, uh, I need 167,000 members, registered users. Which, if you think about it, it's one percent of the Facebook users in the NENA region. And how do you guarantee that these members will come back to you at Nebish? Uh, okay. Well, first of all, the nature of the of the business, like uh, because it's freelance and it's part time, so the turnover is a lot higher than in full time jobs. So, for instance, like in a, in a full time job agency, you uh, you don't change work until you know two or three years, so you don't have a reason to come back. Whereas for me, the turnover is higher, and we're looking at adding other features that are community related to the site to keep, keep people coming back. There's a few gaps in your plan. It's not a perfect plan yet. Uh, the thing that concerns us foremost is um, uh, you are acting as stakeholders more than people who are hands on running the show. What do you think about that? Um, we got the same. We got this feedback from the from the financial expert. You know that we should be more hands-on, uh, but we also wanted to. You know, we need to be realistic with the way things are right now. We need to financially support the company, and at the same time, uh, we need to be able to uh, guide the management. So, because we couldn't personally be hands-on, we had to hire a team to actually do this for us. Uh, but we are coaching them very closely. We meet them at least twice per week, if not more. And we make sure that uh, you know things are going on the way we want it to be going on. What's the size of your payroll currently? We we currently have seven employees, um, Mohammed and Faisal. And I think from the previous session and with the expert and even today, there is one question that keeps on repeating: What makes that your business really a success and worth investing in? What is it? H have you realized that? What is it? Well, look. The thing for us is we've realized that the main thing that made us uh, come to where we are right now is that we're filling a gap that, that hasn't been filled. We, we, we've identified that. What does it take today to make your business profitable, or at least to, to make it breaking even? Mm -hmm. What does it need? Because this question was raised three times, and I don't know if you're realizing the importance of this. Mm -hmm. and, and again, uh, What we is it? We, we understand that our cost structure is what's high and that we can only reduce it. With I, I'll make it volume. simple for you. It's commitment. Commitment to the business. With all due respect to your general manager, he's taking salary. It's not his concern to make it a success today. So I think that's, the, that's what I wanted to hear from you, really. So, judges, we've seen the reaction from one of the missions. There are still two more to be completed. Are you any closer to deciding on who will be the entrepreneur this year? No. Good. I'll let you get away and, of course, get some uh, hard-earned rest after what has been a long day. Thank you very much indeed to each and every one of you for being with us. Thanks very much indeed for watching uh, this edition of The Entrepreneur. Next time we deal with marketing and communications. Promises to be interactive, so make sure you tune in for that one. Another fascinating challenge for all of our finalists. Who's one step closer to being, of course, the entrepreneur? Who is one step closer to that one million dirham cash investment and one million dirhams in support and service? We'll find out next time together on The Entrepreneur.